This is going to be hard. We were together for most of my design career. I mean, yeah. We had a good time together, I think. It was kind of like family, to be honest. Part of the entire suite. But I'm not, yeah, I'm not regretting anything. I think, uh, you know, it, there was no other way than this. There's one thing that we always used to laugh about together was sending an email. The amount of times those emails bounce back. I didn't know that it's not forever. But now, when it's actually real, yeah, I don't know, it just feels different. My hard drive is full of memories, gigabytes and gigabytes of memories. Gonna miss, gonna miss those times. Dramatic, I know, but it's true. At the end of the day, the PDF or the PDF style guide is in fact dead. It has died a death and we had to pay our respects and say goodbye. Yes, it has served us well over the years, but there are some incredible platforms out there changing the landscape of how we actually design living style guides. Living style guide being the optimum word, a place where you can share your mission, vision, and the whole team can unite on one destination, a destination of continuity and consistency. PDFs do not allow you to do that, but brand design platforms do. And saying that, this video today is indeed sponsored by our friends at Corebook. Corebook is a online tool for building design systems, and we have had the pleasure to be able to work with them on an awesome project. A little bit more about Corebook later, but first, I wanna tell you about the project that we worked on for one of Hyperfocus's favorite clients, Heim Planet. So in various iterations, we have been working for Heim Planet for, I don't know, the best part of 10 years. Heim Planet is an amazing brand. It completely revolutionized and changed the marketplace for outdoor adventure. They came up with an amazing idea of creating um, a tent that you could blow up. A completely revolutionary way of creating um, such a product which it completely changed the market. It's won many awards for its innovation and has some incredible people working for them. And it is our honor to yet again, this time as Hyperfocus, to help to take their story to the next level. We got to sit with them, work with them, talk with them, reevaluate where they are today. After all those years, they have been around for around for about 16 years now, and a lot has changed. And they have changed, and their ideas have changed. And we believe that one of our core products, which is the Living Style Guide, was the perfect thing to do, the perfect tool to build, to set them up for the future. For the future of the business, the future of the team, and the future of consistency across everything that is Heim Planet. All right, thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, let's have a tour. I show you um, what we've built for Heim Planet, um, our uh, brand platform for, uh, for Heim Planet. Uh, yeah, let's jump right in. So, um, so you can already see on the left here in the navigation, that's the structure of the platform. It's pretty much also, you know, like how we built the brand. So the first chapter is brand. Yeah, that's actually um, all about 
yeah, like the mission and the vision, the values of, of the brand, you know, all this uh, strategic um, stuff you need to do before you actually start designing. We have this here in, in the brand section. Then we have actually two sections, which is kind of special. We usually have one, but we have um, the basic brand elements and we have advanced um, brand elements. Uh, the reason why we did this is um, it's, you know, like especially the graphic elements we use for Heimplanet. It's quite complex and it's a very systematical approach. So we had to divide it into uh, two chapters. Um, and then we have applications where we have best practices or you can, um, you can also document like or, um, or make templates, for example, um, accessible for, for users there. Anyway, let's have a look into um, each of these chapters. So as I said, um, we have the brand section. Okay, so we have here um, like the main message they want to send. They see themselves as um, explorers because it's all about exploring new ideas and accomplishing things in a different way. And uh, yeah, they do this through, um, yeah, through travel and through inspiration. Yeah, so you can you can already see here like Heimplanet is a lot about imagery. So they have like these really beautiful um, landscapes with with their products, um, and that makes everything look pretty cool right away. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah. Again, just more description. You know what drives the company? Um, what's uh, what's their why? You know what's the reason why they go out of bed every day? what they're actually doing, yeah? So it's, you know, it's not just uh, we like traveling, it's also like they want to have um, really high quality products and they have a really high expectation on themselves when it comes to functionality, um, materials, uh, yeah, and also like sustainability. And then we have like their four core values here, so which are progressive, um, being respectful, um, always uh, thinking unconventional uh, and at the end of the day always be inspiring okay uh, we have usually we also in this section we um, we document the whole tone of voice uh, in there it's actually work in progress at the moment that's why uh, there's a yeah coming soon page here but uh, will come soon maybe we make <laughs> a separate video about tone of voice because we champion this a lot and we think it's super important to really define how your brand um, talks uh, and shows up in, in written language and in, in spoken language. Okay, then we have the brand basics. It starts, of course, with the logo. It shows like, okay, this is uh, why the logo looks like it looks. Yeah, it's actually, yeah, it's a ball. It should represent actually our planet, the Heim planet. Um, and then we have the lines which refer to water, air, earth, and and fire. So the elements, the four elements of of our of our planet. Uh, yeah, and then you have you know the primary logo. There's explanation on how to use the logo so that you always have to, uh, you know, keep some space around the logo. Then, of course, they can use their symbol on their own. Um, and then plus they have a few secondary logos uh, they can use to, to make the whole brand um, appear a bit more playful in, in, in certain uh, situations. Then we have here the color palette. Color palette for Amplanet actually is, um, it's just black and white. It's very simple. Uh, the color of the brand actually shines through their products. So if you have like a really nice red tent, for example, um, you know, it, it works already. I can show you an example down here. You know, there's, you know, don't need too much more. You, you know, that's why black and white just works for, for Heimplanet. Then we have typography. We choose um, Simplon from a Swiss Foundry. We actually... Um, decided to use this type phase like already five years ago and we are still think it's a it's a great choice um, it's a I mean it's from Swiss type so it has this you know um, really grotesquely Swiss timeless uh, appeal to it and also a nice mono variation and we use this uh, mono uh, cut for for all these little details yeah 
because Heimplanet, they really want to uh, feel like um, very systematic and, and very technical and functional. And with all this like little um, text snippets, this micro typography, uh, you know, that really brings the, this whole um, approach to life. Again, explanations on how to use the font and then some examples. Uh, and then the, the, the last basic element, uh, brand asset, is the imagery. They have uh, three different um, ways of uh, showing images. So they have outdoor images, studio images, and also product images. Yeah, I mean, and then we really explain on... I mean, most of the stuff is also through examples. We show how it should look like, but we also describe um, what's important to make the pictures look, uh, yeah, so to make them look how they should look. All right, um, then I show you the advanced section. As I said, it's a very systematic approach. Um, I don't know, maybe you have seen it before. We, we use quite a lot of like these little boxes with a lot of images and graphical elements, typography, um, you know, everything together. And we really try to, to systemize that to also to enable the client to, to work with these elements um, themselves. So they can, you know, put them on their tents, use them for their website um, or, you know, for, for print stuff. I don't know, a catalog, for example, that they can introduce um, this look and feel to, to everything they produce. I, I don't want to go too deep into this now. I just give you like a, a quick um, overview on, on how this looks. We actually, like we, we were inspired um, by um, how, how cards in digital product development, um, how they are systemized and described. And we, yeah, I think, I, I think it will work. Yeah, so it looks really good that they can build their own stuff with this. So, you know, it's a grid and, um, padding and margins are very important. And then here's an example, you know, this is like the stuff they, they should be able to create at the end of the day. Okay, and then we um, also have, I mean, they work again, it's always the goal to, you know, feel very um, technical and uh, yeah, futuristic, I would say as well. Um, that's why they also work a lot with pictograms um, and icons. So here again, described how how this works. Then we have a, uh, a chapter where we talk about all these little graphics elements we use. We call them the hot elements. So all all these lines and and little dashes and boxes. I mean, overall, it's just important that they are like really simple geometric um, shapes and it can you know create patterns out of them and repeat them. Uh, but you have to, you know, position them with, with intention. You cannot just, you know, place them all over the place. There's, you know, there needs to be like a, a little bit uh, artistic uh, feel to it if you, if you work with this kind of stuff. Yeah, and then also, of course, natural, natural patterns and all this kind of stuff. The last thing is um, they have like a signature pattern. We created also like a few um, years ago for them. It's called the Cairo Camo pattern. Um, yeah, as you can see, you can use it as a, a camouflage pattern. Um, they also realized already like 3D forms, which they put into their bags, which is pretty cool. We have this outline version of it, which you can, uh, yeah, you, you actually can find parts of this pattern on, on pretty much every product they create. You know, you can see here it's just a little detail or it's like the whole pattern. It's it's actually pretty cool. All right, and then we have some uh, applications. I mean, here because it's, you know, we just built the platform. The idea is, you know, as soon as they create their own stuff, they should really put it in there and, you know, the best practices, create templates out of it, and then they can store all of this stuff there. So for now, we have just some examples, as you can see here. For, for a potential Instagram feed, for example, so they get an idea, ah, okay, this is how it should look like. We also web the same. Uh, I think uh, the next step will be to create a full um, digital library for them, but this is, uh, this is going to happen in the next phase. But we already have here like some first 
um, really high level um, mockups, uh, screens to show, okay, this is how the brand could look like, uh, uh, could be translated into um, a digital product or let's say a shop in this case. All right, packaging adds the same. This is uh, not done yet, but yeah, I think this is the starting point. This is like how we hand over this to the client and everyone knows, okay, this is, you know, we have to keep on working on this. We have to, you know, bring this to life and, and shape it and refine it with, with everything we do. Um, yeah, and it's, yeah, we're really looking forward to keep on working on this. Um, I also want to say, because this was the first platform we built in uh, in Corebook and it's also I mean it's for for Heim Planet it's the perfect tool to be honest because uh, Corebook really um, gives you the the opportunity to to be very bold uh, you know uh, with typography also like the grid you can have like a really wide grid um, and and use actually like the whole um, uh, space of your of your page um, and that's really super cool. Um, we really liked it. It's also like the whole tool is very intuitive. It's easy to use. Um, it's very simple. You can, but at the end of the day, you can customize pretty much everything. Um, and you know, it's this is always the challenge to to really not make like these kind of platforms look like yeah like a simple documentation but to also bring the brand alive. And I think Corebook really gave us the opportunity to do this with Heimplanet. All right, so thanks a lot. Back to Paul. All right, thanks Jan for that amazing deep dive into Heimplanet. You can check out Heimplanet. We will leave the links in the description below. Yeah, I suppose my, my closing uh, speech on this is always think about a brand as an MVP. It's in a constant state of beta. A living style guide allow you to unite as a team. They are an important, integral tool. They're an amazing platform. There's lots of great stuff that you can do with them. And yeah, as I said before, and I promise not to say one more time, but we have to say goodbye to, uh, to the PDF, to the PDF style guide. We're happy to say goodbye and we will say no more. So we hope as always, you have enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and like this video. Comment down below if you have a completely different opinion and you think PDF style guides should live forever. Please let us know. We would love to discuss this with you in the comment section below. And as always, we will see you in the next one.